What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in this video we're going to talk about an extension that allows you to work with quad base models, which is very powerful for creating things like organic models and that sort of thing. Um, before I get started, I do want to thank my supporters on Patreon. Um, I do owe them a bit of a, an apology this week. Uh, you get to vote every week on my extension of the week and the one they picked um, isn't working with SketchUp 2017. I could not get it to work, so I had to go pick another extension off of the list. So that's how we ended up with quad face tools. But um, as a supporter, you get to vote on my extension of the week. So if you're interested in that, you like what I'm doing, you want to support the show, make sure you check out that link in the notes below. All right, so I want to start off with why this extension matters. And the reason this matters is um, some of you may have seen um, an extension out there called Sub D. It's an organic modeling extension from TomTom Tom that allows you to create some organic shapes. And basically what it does is it uses quad-based geometry to generate like organic type shapes. And the reason it works so well is because quad-based geometry is very um, it's very predictable in the way that it's going to respond. So the So based on that um, Tom Tom has written some algorithms that allow you to work with different quads. It allows for different things, and it's very easy to use. So the reason this extension is important is because it allows you to model in that way, which allows you to create some really cool organic type models, that sort of thing. So like, for example, I'm modeling this right now with um, vertex tools from Tom Tom. And then what we'll do is we'll come in here in just a second Whoops. We'll come in here in just a second and I'll show you what you can do with sub D. So So as you can see all of these all of this geometry in here is in here as quad. A quad is a kind of geometry that has four sides on it. So most geometry in SketchUp comes in as um, three-sided geometry or tries but if you model this as a quad then you can use the extension sub D and you can actually smooth a shape like this you can see how this is getting smoother it gives us a nice smooth shape in here so if you model with quads you can see how you can get these cool shapes that then you can smooth in really quickly and really easily so really cool kind of organic shapes so that's part of the reason for quads is they're very predictable. And so what I want to do is just go through some of these tools real quick just to give you kind of an idea of what they mean. So the first thing that I want to talk about is this tool for actually analyzing your quads. So basically what that'll do is that'll analyze geometry and it'll look at it and it'll tell you where your quads are sitting and where they're not. And by the way, if you want to learn more about quad modeling, Aaron Dietzen from SketchUp did a great presentation on quads that you can check out. I'll put that in the notes below. Um, so as you can see, this mesh analysis, this will take these shapes and it'll analyze them to see if they're actually quad geometry or not. So, and what it does is it uses a color system. And so a color system in here, or the color system in here is if something's three-sided, then it turns blue. If it's four-sided or a quad, it turns green. And if it has more than four sides or if it's an ingon, it'll turn it red. So you can use this when you're modeling to figure out if your shapes are quads or not. So you can see how if I draw this face right here with this turned on, this turns red showing me that it's not a quad. But if I draw a line across the corner here, um, it turns green. So as long as you have this selected, this will do a live analysis. And you do need to be a little careful because it's actually applying these in here as materials. So it's not like you can change a style and turn this on and off. These are actually green. Um, material so you just need to be careful because you can see like over here um, it went ahead and applied some of this to my other geometry even though I didn't really want it to so and you can't as long as it's active you can't apply other materials to it you have to turn it back off and then you can apply materials to all the faces and turn them back to the colors you want them to be So I just want to talk about a few of the tools in here because these are really powerful and really useful. And so we're, we'll kind of use the sphere as a good example because a sphere comes in as quad-based geometry. You can see how these are square. But what it'll do is it'll... So there's two different kinds of selection tools in here. There's select ring 
and there's select loop. And so select ring, what that'll do is that'll expand a selection based on what you tell it to do. So if I click on this, you can see how it says, if I click on grow ring, it's expanding the selection of the objects that are selected here. And if I was to come in here and select another piece right here, I could use the plus and minus to select more of those, or I could just click on this select ring and it would select everything all the way around here. So you can see how that selected all of the hidden geometry around this edge. So if I wanted to, I could use that to really quickly create some cool kind of organic shapes in here. So that is the select ring. There's also select loop. And so what select loop will do is select loop, instead of selecting other ge geometric pieces, it'll take, um, it'll take geometry that's on the ends of your selection and select that. So if I was to click select loop right here, it would select this entire loop all the way around this face. And so what I could do is I could really quickly select this entire face or this entire hidden edge along this sphere. And so the other thing you could do is you can also select loops both directions. So you can see how I can really quickly use that as well to generate some cool stuff. And so you can really quickly with things that are modeled as quads select what you want to select. So like for example I could select all of those objects. I could turn them to non-hidden geometry really quickly. I could also select little parts and pieces using that same tool. So it takes a little practice and a little getting used to to really get an idea of what exactly everything's going to do in here. But once you do, this is really powerful and really quick for working with your selection. So this doesn't have anything to do with organic modeling. This just allows you to select things. So that's loops and rings. Um, skipping ahead a little bit, on here. So most of you know about the sandbox tools create grid option. So you can create a grid in your sandbox. Well the problem is if I go inside this grid and I run this you can see everything turns blue. Well the reason is because this brings this in as tri geometry not quad geometry. So each one of these in SketchUp is considered a triangle not a quad. Well what you can do is you can select all of this and you can use the convert sandbox quads to quad face quads. And so what that does is that brings these in as quad models instead of triangular models. Well, now you can come in here and you can mess around with those in the same kind of way. Well, now they're all in here as quads. So if you were to do something like come in here and smooth this with sub D, you can see how that, that'll allow you to smooth your geometry really quickly and really easily. So this will allow you to use your sandbox geometry as, as quad geometry in your model. And the other thing that does is once again it enables that functionality of the loops. So now I can select my different edge loops and do different things with that. So another good example is the extension curve aloft brings geometry in as quads actually. So if I was to generate a face along here and we'll go ahead and we'll make this a bit smoother. But now if I come in here and I look at this face I could come in here and select a couple different lines, select the loops, and change them to unhidden geometry. And then I could turn hidden geometry off. And then I could really quickly come in here with something like joint push pull or something else and create some really cool shapes using that workflow. So the selection options in this make everything very fast and very easy. So I'm very excited about the selection options in here. So convert wireframe to quads will allow you to create kind of a wire, it'll t allow you to take a wireframe mesh and create quad geometry inside of that. So now this will come in and all of this geometry will be in here as quad based geometry that you can work with as well. Um, convert triangulated mesh to quads. So if you were to come in here and you were to draw a line across this face, then you can see how that's not actually a quad because it's a three-sided shape. You can see how that shows up as blue. Well, if you select this object and you click the convert triangulated mesh to quads, what that'll do is that'll take that and that'll make that a quad face piece of geometry. So you can use that to fix things in your models, that sort of thing. The triangulation tools allow you to change the way things are triangulated. So 
Um, this is a lot like the flip option in the sandbox tools. So you can flip the way that the geometry in these quads is by selecting flip triangulation tool. Or if you have a bunch of flat quads in here and or let's say you have these in and they have this fa this edge across the face. Well, they're flat. You don't really need that. So you can use the remove triangulation in order to remove that. Or you can use the add triangulation to add triangulation into your faces. I know this is all kind of high level stuff, but it's stuff that can be useful for different kinds of modeling. Um, like I said, I'm mostly, I'm most excited about the selection options, but there's some other really cool things in here as well. So it's got some options in here for um, generating ends. So, like for example, if I've got a face in here and I've got a line coming across it, you can see how this is not a quad, but if I use the build corners option, it'll fix this corner so that that's quad geometry. And the same thing over here, and I actually struggled a little bit to get this one to work, but it'll also build ends. So you can see how the way this was, this wasn't a quad, because this this object actually has three lines on this end. So according to quad face tools, this isn't a quad piece of geometry. Well, if you click on this and you click add end or build ends, then that'll come in here and that'll build this as a quad piece. So, and then now that you do that, if you were to use an extension like sub D, you can see how you could use that to create an organically curved shape based on that geometry that you have in there. So one of the other cool options that this has is it has a UV mapping tool. And so for, for those of you that don't know the way UV mapping works, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this live mesh analysis off, but the way UV mapping works is when you have a shape like this sphere and you apply a material to it and we'll just pick something simple you can see how because these are in here as different quads it doesn't map this material right and so you have a lot of trouble getting everything to map properly along this face so what you can do is you can use the UV mapping tool to actually adjust that material so you can see how you can use the UV mapping to adjust the way this material maps along the quads. And you can see how down at the end, it doesn't work quite as well because these aren't quads, these are tries. So this is why quads are so important. Um, but the other thing you can do with an object like this sphere is you can take it and there's an unwrap UV grid. And so it's actually gonna allow you to unwrap this object over here off to the right so that you can actually apply the material over here and then reapply it back to your object. And there's actually a tool in here for copying and pasting once you've done that. So if I was to come in here and like, let's say for example, I was to adjust this texture, I could then reapply it to this sphere. And I actually had some trouble making it work, but it's definitely in there. So, and then the last thing, and we'll go back over to our other sphere for this option, is there's also an option in here to insert loops. So if you remember, we talked about selecting loops and also rings. So if I select this loop, or if I select all of these loops around this edge, you can use the option for insert or remove loops to add detail on the inside. So you can see how this will actually add loops to your shape to make it more organic. So you can see how it added the loops across the side here and then it'll add them the other way. And you have to be a little bit careful when you do this because you can generate a whole lot of geometry. I know that was a lot of information. I want to go over this more in the future, but I wanted to give you kind of an overview of what quad face tools can do because I think there's a lot of confusion about you know what it can do. I think it's very powerful, especially for the selection aspects for a lot of the stuff that I do. I'm very excited about that. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I'd love to know what you think about this extension. Um, if you're even interested in quad based modeling, um, I know it's kind of advanced, but leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.